Hey, what's up? I'm Al Cox. I play games, make games, and everything in between. And today, we're going to be checking out the Smart Asset Slingshot. That's comprised of multiple nodes. If you're going to be making games in BuildBox 3, you're probably not going to be using much code. And if you do use code, well, then you're a baller and I'm jealous. Starting out in BuildBox 3 can be really difficult and there's a lot of things going on. It's hard to know how things work. So I've been going through all the smart assets BuildBox has, talking about them and going in depth in how they work so that when you need them, you can either pull from the smart assets or just pull straight from the nodes and start your game creation right away, all with no code. So let's jump into it. Before I begin, if you use BuildBox to make games, hit that like and subscribe button because I'm going to go through all the smart assets, break down how they're made up by individual nodes to help give you a step-by-step -step guide on understanding BuildBox 3. Open up a default template. Here's the world. Let's check out the asset library, smart assets, slingshot. Grab the slingshot, put it into this world. Right now, this arrow is pointing up, which is not gonna work when we build out the game. But let's jump into the smart asset. We got the start, physics, that's a dynamics. Always pay attention to here where it says friction and bounce and mass because when you build out your game, you're gonna wanna know how things are set up, how they work and how they move around. Getting a good feel of the friction, bounce, and mass will help you down the line. Here is the mesh, the 3D sphere of the ball. The spectacular hardness is set to 60, which is what makes it super reflective right here. Oh, we should probably add physics to the ground, make it static, and... Oh, look at that, so, okay. We can see the arrow moving, which is great. So the arrow is pointing up. That may or may not be a problem. Here's the slingshot mechanism. You can see everything is written here. I would not touch this unless you know exactly what you're doing. The cool thing is if you can literally take this slingshot node, go into another asset and copy and paste it and start building it out. So this is why it's really important to jump in and get a good grasp of what makes up these smart assets, how they work. If you understand that, then you can literally take these pieces and put them into other assets down the line. There's four nodes coming off the slingshot nodes, the cue ball nodes, the cue line, the cue arrow, and the 3D model. The cue ball is obviously this ball. The cue line is what is supposed to stretch from when you pull away from the ball. The cue arrow we've seen, and the cue and the 3D model looks like it's a flat plane mesh that has the texture of a dimming light. So I'm actually gonna change this opacity to zero for 25%. Here we can see that dimming light below the sphere. We can see the arrow. However, the slingshot mechanism isn't really cool, isn't really working. Oh, and there goes the ball. So let's let's go ahead and move this opacity up a little bit. I wanna create a world. Gotta change the Camera angle, always one of the first things I like to do. This is the scale tool, super helpful. Go like that. And I'm gonna make a little wall. I wanna preface that there is a slingshot template and we'll be going into that in a second. But I think it's best to start out with the smart asset from the asset library because if that asset isn't working properly and some of them don't work properly, you need to know that. <laughs> you need to know when something is working properly versus when it's not. BuildBox has a lot of little bugs all over the place so it's important to pay attention. Grab these. And now uh, just use the rotate tool, set it to exactly 90 degrees. The more you're in BuildBox, the more you get familiar with how things move. Until that happens, it gets a little frustrating. That probably will be frustrating for a while. That is okay. Now I don't want the ball, oh wow, that just flew off. And that's because this cube has no physics. So we're gonna set it to kinematic, we can set it to static actually. Setting the type, static, dynamic, kinematic, all these use processing power. So even here when it's set to dynamic, if you can have it only be affected by a particular asset, this will also save on the processing power. Using it for all is pretty substantial. We need it in this scenario, but this is always subject to change depending on the game that you're making. Like if the game you're making and the ball only bounces off of the walls, well then you only need to have 
the asset be affected by the wall. So let's look at that again and grab the cube. And <laughs> very cool. See, this is this is one of the fun things about playing in 3D is I was not expecting that. So I can go into the cube and I meant to set it to static. So here we go, let's check it again. See, and then the ball kind of bounces off of the wall. But again, the arrow feature isn't working as it should be. You can see that there's like something going on, like right there, there's like a dot and a, another shading effect. That is supposed to be the Q line, but the Q line is not working properly. And if you want to get the Q line working properly, it's probably best at this point to just jump into the pool template. All the balls in here are using the slingshot asset. However, when this is used, you can see it's actually used properly. Like this is how it's supposed to look, it's supposed to work. Why does this not work when I grab the slingshot asset and move it to my default template? Let's drag in a slingshot. One of these is not like the other. See, you see this just doesn't work. Whereas in this works fine. My guess here is the BuildBox team has yet to update the slingshot asset. Well, a lot of the assets were just created quickly. I've even made smart assets myself that are pretty cool. Here in BuildBox, you can see that some things are built out more than others. Even some of these templates are not fully built out. If you want to use the slingshot method, grab it from the template, not from the smart asset. I think that's the biggest takeaway. And this is just cool. There's like a million ideas and things you can do to make a game. You can make something like pool marbles, have different masses, can make, you know, while the red slingshot works, it doesn't work as well as the yellow slingshot. And you can make cool games with this, like pool or something with marbles, you know, grab one of these and make it twice as big. Oh, look, it's just literally, and, endless possibilities. So that makes me wonder what is the biggest difference between these two. Let me change this to red, slingshot red. Now let's take a look one by one. This process totally gets tedious, but I find that it's very necessary in BuildBox 3 because the software still has a lot of bugs. So let's see what's the difference here. Okay, I'm gonna start with the start because that's like the best place to start. So everything looks identical. Go to slingshot, slingshot looks identical. Technically, we should check the code here. So I'm gonna grab all this, open up Sublime, which is a text editor. If you don't have a text editor, I would recommend getting one. It'll help you organize stuff down the line. First thing I wanna do is see if the code is the same or if it's different. And this is pretty easy to tell. I can just go to line 65, see that it does a return. Go to line 65 and see that it's different. Okay, so this is huge. I bet you I can take this code, take this code, Go into here, delete everything in slingshot red, paste it, and hit play. And look at that, now everything is working properly. I think this is a great introduction and learning curve for BuildBox 3. BuildBox 3 has a lot of dope features like smart assets, a lot of nodes, you don't need to code, but having that basic understanding of looking at one piece of code and another piece of code, copying the code that works, deleting the code that doesn't work and pasting it into where you want is currently part of the process and will probably be there until somebody fixes it. I'll definitely let BuildBox support know I have no doubt that they will fix it when the time comes, but they have a lot on their plate. Disconnect points like this are all over the software. So the sooner you get used to it, adjust, adapt, and keep moving, the sooner you can get your games out there. So if you like this video, if you like learning about the slingshot asset, be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on BuildBox 3 and things that you've seen, and I'll see you next time. Peace.